welcome to Knife Chats. If you like this video, please take a moment to leave a comment. Thank you. I thought I'd take a few minutes to talk about a few knives that I've recently added to my collection that I probably will never get around to doing a review on simply because uh, I've done reviews on similar knives and already talked about the pattern or something. So there's no real reason to go into great detail on these knives, but I'm kind of happy to have them in the collection. Um, I'm going to start with this one in the middle here, which is uh, an 8-inch uh, horsehead puko. Uh, and the reason uh, I got it is because I really like this type of knife, especially the uh, the horsehead pukos. And I never had the... Uh, 8 inch one. I just recently managed to get it. You see here this is a made in Finland knife and uh, I always like the, the scabbards with it and everything. Um, and it's a really cool knife. Um, this is known as the man's version of the knife. I've already done a video on the Horsehead Puko talking about the history of them and stuff when I got the uh, smaller women's version, the 6 inch version. So there's really no reason for me to go into a great deal of information on the 8 inch knife because uh, it's basically the same as the 6 inch knife. The difference being this, this is the one that uh, the men would use for... Uh, you know, hunting and fishing and stuff. And this was supposedly the women's version that was used around the kitchen and such. But you can see they're basically same knife, just one's a little bit bigger than the other. Uh, this one has a three inch blade, that's the women's version. This one has about a three and seven eighths inch blade. Overall length of it is almost eight inches. Really cool knife, but uh, no reason to go into much more detail than that except to say that it is a knife that I finally got in my collection that I've been looking for for a long time. And they're really cool knives. Let's move on to uh, the other four knives that are still on the table here. Next up is this Gerber Stockman I got. I didn't even know Gerber made traditional pattern knives. I guess they did at one time. I think these are back from the 1980s or something. It's kind of interesting. It's got a uh, really nice stag handles on it. And if you notice, there's some uh, scroll work done on the bolsters. Um, you can see this one is kind of used a little bit. Uh, not in the best of shape. I don't know uh, too much about the knife either other than it's got stag handles and it's got a locking main clip blade. Doesn't look like it was used too much. You see here that it does say Gerber on it. Uh, so, I don't know if it was made in the United States or not, though. It doesn't say anything about where it was made. The other two blades you have on it are a sheep foot blade and a uh, spay blade. And you notice it's got three back springs, so each blade is working off of its own spring. So kind of odd for a stockman, and as well as the locking main blade. It does lock pretty well. But the problem is, is uh, the closing of the blade is kind of lazy. I don't know if that's because of the age of it or what. Um, all in all, I guess it's a decent knife. I really need to learn more about it. Um, right now, it's in my collection. I don't know how long I'm going to keep it. I really need to find out just how, um, how much of an oddball it is, how rare these knives are. Um, I don't know um, too much about it right now. Once I find out more about it, maybe I'll do a review on it, but for right now, this is about all you're going to see about it. I bought it because it seemed kind of interesting, but uh, uh, now that I have it on my hand, uh, it may not stay in the collection. We'll just see what happens. It really depends if, once I know more about the knife. So let's move on to the next one here. Okay, next up is the Burnt Salmon Bone uh, 090 Stockman. And... Uh, kind of like the knife. It's got an interesting color to it. Uh, it's salmon, so it's kind of an orangey pink color. Um, and it's your typical case knife. If you know anything about case knives, then you know what this is like. I mean, you've got your nickel silver bolsters, your brass liners, your stainless steel back springs, and your true sharp stainless steel blades. You've got the, the clip blade for the master blade, then your sheep foot and a spay blade. Um, and this particular one is uh, 
They call it item number 27054. You see the pattern number is 63090. I'm not going to talk much more about it simply because I have a full review on the uh, Deep Canyon um, Caribbean Blue Bone, um, which I also have. And uh, the only difference between the two, if you notice here, is the Deep Canyon has uh, much thicker bone scales as opposed to the uh, burnt salmon, which has a a more uh, traditional kind of uh, um, flatter bone scales on it. Um, I kind of like the Deep Canyon better because like I'll mention in the other video, I like the way you can uh, grip it a little bit more. It feels better in the hand. But uh, if you're more interested in the traditional ones, then you could go with something like the Burnt Salmon or several other ones. I do like the 090 pattern. I'll probably be picking up more of those, but why uh, go into great detail talking about the knives over and over? Uh, if you want to know more about the 090 pattern, I would go to the uh, Deep Canyon video that I did instead. But So, got another one. So I've got two in that collection now. Really happy with them. And I'll probably see more of them in the future. Maybe when I have five of them or something, I'll talk about them again. Okay, so next up is kind of a goofy knife. Uh, it's a novelty knife. I mean, seriously, it's a novelty knife. It's by Novelty Knife Company, uh, which is one of those Smoky Mountain Knife Works house brands. And this is what happens when I'm um, short a couple bucks for free shipping. I go and look for some other knife to pick up that's going to be low cost. And uh, in this case, I went for a $5 knife to get me over so I could get free shipping. Um, the shipping would have been another $6. So... I saved a buck by getting a cheap knife, and uh, it's really not that bad of a knife. Uh, you've got uh, a half stop on both blades. You've got a nice clip blade, a uh, nice, this one also is kind of a clip blade too, even though I guess it's supposed to be a, uh, a spear blade or a pin blade. You got your Barlow on the, on the big bolster there, and it's one of the bombshell Barlows, so you've got the scantily clad woman on it. She's underneath a piece of uh, celluloid, and then you can see the uh, exposed rivets there. Stainless steel uh, liners and um, stainless steel back springs. Same picture on both sides. But uh, the thing is, is it's really not that bad a knife. I'm assuming the blades are 420. It might be better than that. I don't know. Uh, they make similar knives in the Remington line. They're also made through uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And then you also see the ones for like Hopalong Cassidy and uh, uh, Riders of the Silver Screen and all that other stuff. So if you're not into Bombshell Barlows, they also have uh, the other ones. Um, and, you know, for a $5 knife, for a $5 Barlow, I can't really complain. It's pretty decent. It's got a decent enough edge on it and a uh, well-polished blade and, uh, you know, half stops and everything else. So... For a $5 knife, uh, you know, a $5 novelty knife, uh, it's pretty decent. I, I kind of like it. Um, don't know if I'll be buying any more, but you never know. Some other day I might be short and need to spend another $5 for free shipping. And, you know, if I can uh, spend $5 to save $7, I'm going to do it. So that's how I end up getting knives like this. Let's take a look at this last one here. This last knife I'm going to talk about, it was actually made for pharmacists, which is kind of interesting because it doesn't look anything like a pharmacist knife. It actually looks like a scout knife. Now, for those not familiar, uh, if you've ever seen this knife, you've probably heard it called a doctor's knife. Well, it was also known as a pharmacist knife for the longest time. And when you think about the tools that you find on it, it's really designed more for a pharmacist than it is for a doctor. You have the uh, main spear blade, which you use for cutting pills and such, and also for sorting powder out. And then you also have the spatula. This is not something you use. It's not a tongue depressor or something. It is actually used for counting pills. You sort pills with it. And uh, that's really what it's designed for. And it's also for scooping up powder and putting it in bottles and such. So that's what the uh, spatula blade is for. And then the bottom of it, as you know, is known as a pill crusher. So it's, 
everything about this is talking about medications and ways of sorting medication and everything else and that's why this knife was known as a pharmacist knife for the longest time and it was used by pharmacists uh, which is kind of interesting because the knife we're going to be looking at looks nothing like a knife that a pharmacist would use unless that pharmacist just happened to be going camping now if you're familiar with my channel you know I collect scout knives or camp knives um, and I've been doing it for some time and this is really an interesting knife I really have never seen it in like 15 or 20 years of collecting these kind of knives and uh, then I saw two of them in the same week and I have yet to see them again in any case it's really a kind of a bizarre knife it's a camp knife so you've got the blades uh, your your spear blade the uh, safety can opener notice it says stainless USA a cap lifter screwdriver also marked stainless USA and then your puncher reamer back here also marked stainless USA so they were definitely letting you know everything is stainless and you notice this is by Imperial also stamped stainless USA but the cool thing about it is all these symbols on it um, which all relate to the pharmaceutical industry you notice the RX in the middle which I believe is the Greek word recipe which translates into prescription that's what they uh, when you're buying out when you're getting your prescription filled you're getting your recipe filled that's the uh, what the uh, RX stood for you notice at the bottom there you see a mortar and pestle that's for grinding up drugs and everything and then at the top which kind of looks funky like a, some kind of weird Easter egg that's actually called a show globe and these were uh, actually something that used to hang in front of pharmacies all the way up until the beginning of the 20th century and then they just kind of um, disappeared they, they stopped uh, using them anymore but then in the 1950s late 1950s there was a revival going on through one of the uh, pharmaceutical organizations to try and encourage pharmacies to hang show globes again so that people would uh, uh, know where the pharmacy was and also uh, kind of a way of advertising them and so that's what the show globe is on there for and I have a feeling that that actually is what dates this knife to probably the late 50s or early 60s and I got a feeling it was an advertisement that was being put out by that uh, pharmaceutical organization I don't remember the name of the organization off the top of my head I'll put it in the uh, in the description though um, so that's the kind of cool thing about this knife it's got a show globe on it and uh, it was designed for pharmacists but it's a camp knife which would have been a very useful knife but uh, not necessarily a useful knife to be used in the pharmacy uh, I do have other knives that are actually designed for use in the pharmacy I have to show those at another time but uh, this one I just thought was kind of cool you know a uh, advertisement knife for pharmacists that was a camp knife and so what the heck I had to grab it and I got it at a decent price and it's in really good shape I don't know how common they are but like I said I've only seen two of them in the last 20 years and I saw them both in the same week any case there you have it five knives that I've recently picked up that I thought I'd share with you we got the eight inch horse head Puko I'll put that in the back here the bombshell Barlow the burnt salmon case 090 stockman a gerber stockman and then this pharmacy scout knife really cool knives that i found they're all different in some ways but they're all new in my collection um love to hear about any kind of a uh, new knife that you have in your collection also like to know what you think about this idea of just showing five random knives occasionally uh and talking about them for a minute or two rather than going into a great detail about them um, is it something you'd like to see more of um, and also what do you think of these knives especially this one um, do you think it's really worth having in the collection 
it's used, uh, but it's also kind of rare. But this one, this one I know is staying in my collection. Any case, um, love to hear your thoughts and uh, hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats. And if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon.